Hey, welcome to Gold Scratch. So, about a month ago, I made a video about the Almighty 427, and it was a pretty good video for me. Got lots of uh, nice feedback on it, and I talked about the historical value of the 427. Prior to 1970, it was the biggest engine that you could buy. Uh, it was introduced for Corvettes in 1966 by GM, and uh, nowadays you can get big blocks with over 600 cubic inches and 1,000 horsepower, and this is not one of them. This is a street engine, and uh, I'm going to tell you all about it because this engine is for sale. The reason I started YouTube in the first place, started a channel, was to sell my motors. Most of them have been custom built for a customer, but I actually built this one on spec, so it's for sale. So uh, when I talked about it, um, one of the things I mentioned was the 427 was introduced for Corvettes, but you, if you went to your GM dealer, you couldn't get one in a Camaro or a Nova or a Cheval. GM wouldn't allow more than 400 cubic inches in a muscle car. So, however, a bunch of 427s found their way into muscle cars. So, a good friend of mine, Mike Kimball, who was holding the camera from here right now, uh, dug up this ad. One of the things I mentioned was Baldwin Chevrolet in New York, one of the performance dealers would uh, sell you a 427 Camaro and they did that by actually taking the 396 out and selling it and putting the 427 in it. So this is an ad from, uh, an actual ad from 1968 by Baldwin Chevrolet in New York. And you could get a 427 in a Camaro or Chevelle or a Nova. And they would put any gear ratio you wanted, any transmission you wanted, and headers for $3,795, no tax. How's that for a deal? So. Uh, this is going on my uh, wall of fame because it's a pretty cool ad, I think, and uh, kind of captures the moment from, from the 60s. So the other thing when I made the video, I talked about, uh, at that time I had the block on the build stand. It was all clean and prepared. All the parts were in the layout table. They had all been mocked up and prepared and clean and ready for assembly. And I detailed, provided detailed information about all the parts. And I mentioned that I was going to use a Comp 268 flat top camshaft, flat top of hydraulic camshaft. And after I made that video, I thought about it for a while. And I thought, you know, this is a pretty high-end build. It's, a, uh, it's, it's covered in the first video, but it's a four-bolt block, high-performance block, forged crankshaft, manly rods with ARP rod bolts, Y-scope pistons, final fit rings, uh, 116th ring package, a good rotating assembly, so it deserves a hydraulic roller. So the only negative thing about hydraulic rollers are they cost a lot of money. And the hydraulic roller setup with the lifters is about three times the cost of a flat top of camshaft setup. But anyway, I did it. I have the 268H. If anybody's interested in it, it's still in the box. I haven't even taken it out of the box. But I did install a hydraulic roller cam. The one I picked is a 276 uh, uh, comp. Extreme Energy 276 HR, which is hydraulic roller. I used the same cam in a previous 427 build, uh, uh, Norman Culver's 427. There's a video about that about a year and a half ago. It was actually one of my better videos as well. 427 seemed to be pretty popular. So I used that cam because I had this engine for sale, so I wanted to hit a broadest range of marketing that I could. And so that cam will work good in a full-size Chevrolet, right down to a Nova or a Camaro. Uh, it's uh, 324 at 50 on the intake and 510 lift. So, um, and this is an interesting thing about camshafts. The other camshaft that I talked about, the 268 flat tap the cam, was 268 at 6 thou, also 324 at 50. So the flat tappet and the roller are both the same place at 50, but the roller flat tappet cam starts later. How the heck does that work? It, start, it works that way because the flat tappet cam can actually lift the valve off the seat faster than a roller can. And so by the time you get to 50 thou lift, the flat tappet cam is caught up to the roller in terms of duration. So hope that makes sense, uh, everybody. Uh, however, the roller, once it gets going up that ramp, it'll catch up to the flat tap of cam and pass it, get the valve open further and hold it open longer. So, uh, however, I expect the power output of this roller cam to be about the same as the flat tap. It's just one of the issues is reliability and durability and a roller.
go is a lot safer uh, investment to make right now. So, so that's it. So the other thing is uh, to compare this engine. Uh, there's two engines I want to compare it to, and one is the original L88 that I just showed in the ad from Baldwin Chevrolet from the 60s. And the other one, uh, GM Performance, recognizing the importance or significance of the L88 being uh, uh, historic, have created what they call a ZZ427. And they, in their own literature, they claim that they are marketing this ZZ427 as a direct replacement for the L88 engine. So, uh, so I'm going to compare this engine to the L88 to the ZZ427. So it says that the L88 had 11 to 1 compression ratio back when you could buy Sunoco uh, 260 with 100 octane in it. Uh, this engine is 10 to 1 compression and so is the ZZ 427. Uh, as far as camshaft goes, totally different. The L88 has solid lifter, flat type of camshaft and almost all the GM's top end performance engines back in the day, including Z28s, uh, had the solid lifter camshaft. Uh, it's not a practical uh, engine or camshaft to use on the street and for that reason GM has decided to use a hydraulic roller as well uh, which is uh, also exactly 224 at 50 and a little bit less I think is 234 on the exhaust where this one's only 230 on the exhaust and the GM cams a little bit more lift so uh, kind of right in the middle of the two uh, the other thing is cylinder heads the original cylinder heads back in the 60s, the L88s all had square port heads. They were considered, and all the top engines, the 396, the L78, also had the big square port heads. However, it was learned over time that uh, you could actually make more power with the oval port heads, the round port heads. Uh, thus, the ZZ427 also has oval port heads. They are aluminum. Uh, these are actually the original heads off a 1966 Corvette, the 702 castings. And so one of the reasons I wanted to reuse them, they've been professionally ported, although they're not big. Uh, I've actually measured the combustion, the intake volume, it's exactly 250 cc's. So 250 cc's will, will support 500 horsepower. And so they're not gonna hold this engine back, that's for sure. And the other thing is, uh, with a set of st stock valve covers, these are just my shop valve covers, set of stock valve covers and the correct intake manifold, if you're restoring a muscle car from the 60s, it could look period correct. It might not be the original engine it came in, but it could be a correct engine. But the heads, the block, this block has been decked, so there are no numbers on the dock, on the deck of the block uh, for that reason. Third thing is, this engine does have a high-rise uh, single plane manifold, the ZZ6, ZZ427 uh, has dual plane and so does the L88. Now, having said that, this engine is for sale and I can customize it any way you want. If you want to use a, a different intake manifold, different valve covers. If you want to put a big cam in it and spin it 7,000 RPM, we can do that too because the, the bottom end is uh, built to take it. So, uh, the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to start it up and let it run today. And then on Saturday, this is already Wednesday, on Saturday we're going to Waters Dino in Springfield, Ontario. And we're going to put it on the dyno and see what it'll do. So. The ZZ 427 is advertised at 480 horsepower. The L88 was 425, who knows what it really made. Uh, and this is gonna be somewhere in between and I'm not gonna guess any further than that. We'll see what happens when we get uh, get to the dyno. So let's uh, start it up quickly. Uh, I've just warmed it up and uh, so it's gonna idle nice, listen to the idle and then we'll uh, call it a day. Interesting thing 
As you can see, it idles nice at 750 RPM. This is not a radical camshaft. As I say, it'll work in a heavy car with a stock rear end and a stock, stock converter or whatever, and doesn't need no other modifications. But as I mentioned, all the inputs into this engine, one of the most important things is the, is the outputs, and I, I want to bring that up because it's important. I call it my diagnostics. So after I started this engine the first time, uh, about a month ago now almost, and run it for a half an hour, I do three things. I pressurize the cooling system with a pressure tester, and that makes sure that you don't have a head gasket leak, an intake manifold leak, you don't have water going into oil anywhere, or oil going into water. That was good. The next thing I did was take a compression test, an actual compression test, anybody can do that with a compression tester. And I had actually calculated the compression would be 171 PSI based on the static and dynamic compression, the, lo the location where the intake valve closes and all that stuff. And my actual compression turned out to be an average of 174.5. And the spread was nice and narrow, plus or minus five PSI. <clears throat> so I was actually surprised by that because it was more than I planned. And the, the calculation assumes there's no cylinder pressure loss past the valves or the, piston rings or anything and for that reason you'd have to have a perfect engine to get what you expected so I could have been off on a little bit of my calculation I guess because it's 174 psi 174 and a half and uh, that's confirmed by the leak down uh, test that I took and the leak down test was uh, with my Barossa leak down tester I tested many many engines there's only 10.4 percent leak down and the spread was nice 9 to 11 percent and that's a really good number for any engine, but the rings aren't even broken in on this engine yet. On Saturday, after about five or ten pulls on the dyno, they will be broken in, and if anything, those numbers uh, make it a little better at least. But 10% is a good number for, for any uh, stock engine. And uh, so that means it's well sealed. Of course, it's got oil good oil pressure, the taking temperature is very cylinder, uh, all the rest of that stuff, and everything's checking out nice, so we just got to get her to the dyno. If you're interested in this engine, I'll leave my phone number and contact information in the description of the video, and you can contact me. If you want to come and watch the dyno test, you're welcome to do that as well. We're in London, Ontario, and uh, that's all I have to say for now. We'll see you on Saturday. Thanks for watching Gold's Garage.